Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Auto. So here we have a Maxus eDeliver 3 electric van. And in this video, I'm just going to talk about the heating system and explain how it works, because maybe you're a new user and you're a little bit confused by it, because it is different to other vehicles. And also why I think it's actually quite a good heater for an electric vehicle, because uh, I've seen many other videos on YouTube where people just get it wrong and don't know how to use this. So let's just start this up and I'm probably going to have to turn the radio off when that boots up. So the heater system on this is a little bit uh, unusual for a modern vehicle. It's it's very much a manual heating system. Uh, all right, let's just pause that there. So uh, there are switches here which are familiar and the same as any other uh, vehicle but uh, both cooling and heating is manual uh, and that has some advantages. So first off, um, like a traditional older vehicle, you've got a fan. And let me just turn all this off. So the fan is just running the 12 volt fan and is now blowing air out of the vents. So at this point you're just getting fresh air into the cabin and it's only using the 12 volt fan so it's not drawing power from the traction battery and therefore you're not going to see any loss of range by just using the normal ventilation so that's all good uh, unlike any other uh, electric vehicle where you tend to by default actually get some heat and you have to manually turn it down um, and if you want air conditioning you press the ac button there and then you get air conditioning at this point it is using the traction battery to power that air conditioning compressor like all EVs and you are going to see a slight loss of range. Air conditioning doesn't use as much power as heating, the heating system does but in the summer you are going to see slightly less range if you run the air conditioning. And it is manual, it's a simple on and off and then you can adjust your fan speed. And that is how a lot of vehicles without climate control work. So at that point, this is no different to the uh, majority of other vehicles out there. At this point, I would say on the air conditioning, when you turn the air conditioning on, you can feel and hear the air conditioning compressor. It vibrates and you can also hear it, uh, particularly if you're not moving and you're stationary. And that is because there's no other noise in an electric vehicle. Um, but if you're not used to it and you suddenly feel this vibration, you can sort of feel it in the floor through your um, feet as well. Uh, but it's completely normal. Um, the, the air conditioning compressor builds up speed and you can feel that vibration, but once it gets up to sort of temperature as it were, it's not temperature, but once it gets to its normal operating uh, mode, it quietens back down and the vibration is much less and you can just hear it there, it's just kicked in. And then it sort of kicks in and off to maintain whatever air conditioning you want. Um, so the longer it's running, the quieter it gets, but that initial noise and vibration is completely normal. So let's jump back to the controls. So as I said, a lot of these controls are familiar. So like the direction of airflow, at the moment it's on our face. You can also have it down on your feet and you can also have it there up on the windscreen. Let me just get that back to my face. And then you've also got a recirculation button. So if you're uh, let's say for example you're sat behind a bus or an HGV in traffic and it's belting out black smoke out the back uh, you can push that and it will close off the vents at the front of the vehicle and not let new air in and just recirculate the air inside the cabin um, and you've also got here a button which does the windscreen and your feet together for maximum defrost so at this point the heating system well let's say the air conditioning system is just like it is on many other cars that doesn't have climate control so now for the heating this is where a lot of people get it wrong the heating is this button here and it works just the same as the air conditioning so whereas air conditioning is that one there to turn the air conditioning on and off and at that point when it's on as i said it's going to use the high voltage battery and therefore reduce your range a little bit the heating is exactly the same when you push that button there it's going to turn the heating on and with these like many other electric vehicles it's got what's called a ptc heater and that's basically um, an electric fan heater almost but that also uses the main 400 volt traction battery and therefore does use a lot of energy. And that heat is absolutely instant. That is really hot now. It heats up in 
five six seconds it's quite incredible so um, by having it manual it means you turn it on and off and you don't have it on all the time um, which is something you can actually do in other EVs and end up having the heat more often because you've got that adjustable knob to change the temperature you can actually be cooling for heat when maybe you don't want to so I think it is actually quite a good idea in a small battery electric vehicle so the downside of it is you do have to turn it on and off it's not one of those things you're just going to turn on and leave on because it gets so goddamn hot that really is instant very very almost hair dryer temperature air out of those vents there um, so as you're driving you will turn this on and off as and when you want heat but every time you're turning it off you're not using energy you're not using energy from that traction battery so it does make this a much more efficient heating system but the downside of this is it is all very manual and you've basically got cold air on and off and hot air on and off and then you adjust the airflow with the fan there is one final button over here which is this button which is eco uh, it's not going to work when it's just on normal fresh air fan but it does work on both the air conditioning and the um, heating so let's put the heat back on and we've now got maximum heat coming out of those vents and I would say unless it's a really cold winter's day nearly all the time that's going to be too hot so that's when we press the eco button and what that does is basically halves the heat and now yeah that heat is very much more gentle and a lot more comfortable actually we are in the summer after all at the moment um, so effectively you've got two stages of heat the button for maximum and you add the eco mode on and it reduces it to half heat and the same works with the air conditioning you can have full air conditioning or you can press that and have half air conditioning so this is uh, a bit of an unusual heating system to get used to because we're all used to just a rotary knob to adjust our air temperature with usually a manual air, con um, air conditioning control whereas this is all manual you've got a manual air conditioning on and off and a manual heating on and off and then just normal fresh air um, once you get used to it it actually works just fine and as I said I think it has its advantages because you don't use heat unnecessarily and therefore you attain um, your driving efficiency and you're going to maximize your mileage because you're not draining power from the traction battery by using the air, the heating unnecessarily but you have to remember to press that eco button to reduce it all down um, particularly in the winter because this heater is a very very hot um, the good thing is if you get in the van when it's uh, frozen up and it's a frosty morning you're going to put this on put it on the windscreen and it's going to demist the van incredibly quickly these do not have preconditioning but to be honest you don't really need it because this heater is so efficient uh, it gets hot in seconds and it's going to melt the ice off the van incredibly quickly but when you're driving you're going to want to press that eco button there to half the heat down uh, because it's just so hot so my final uh, little bit of instruction here on this heating system is going to be when you want both air conditioning and heating at the same time so um, that scenario typically happens in the winter when you want the heating on but your windscreen might be um, misting up a little bit because there's a lot of dampness in the air and um, if you have air conditioning on and try to put heating on it turns the air con off if you've got heating on and you put the air con on it turns the heating off um, that is if the heating is in all of these modes however when it's on the windscreen you can have both on you can have heating and air conditioning so that's great for doing that demisting of the glass but in all other modes you either only have heating or air conditioning at once so i hope that's helped uh, because as a first time user um, understanding how this works is a little bit confusing um, if you want to read the manual it's page uh, 51 I think yeah page 51 is the heating section uh, the manual not particularly good actually it doesn't describe it particularly well so I hope that video helps and uh, you get to grips with how this heating works because actually a lot of the viewers get it wrong and I think it's perfectly fine it's uh, a bit different but it does the job perfectly fine so as always if you found this video useful please do click that thumbs up button on youtube do subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you on the next video